I think that this is probably a good segue for the solar aqua grid. So if you could explain what that is to the layman, because it's pretty interesting stuff. Yeah, yeah, it it, it is. We were a, a few years ago. We were approached by an an energy company to uh, to do and and a potential project developer to do a study to really do a good economic and feasibility analysis of putting solar over canals in California. And you know, California is about four thousand miles of open canals, and we estimated that if we covered all of them, that would get us halfway to our 2030 goals for renewable, additional renewable energy in the state. So that land area, using already disturbed land, is just makes a lot of sense mm-hmm. for that. So that, that, that was one of the motivations for doing it because we know it's gonna cost more just to build it and install solar when you have to have a little bit of customization of the design versus if let's say you Rick own, you know, a hundred acre field and you're not doing anything with it and you want to make some money off of it. Okay. You'll sign up with somebody to put solar on it. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, that may be a land that either is productive farmland or it may be land with a high biodiversity value that uh, should be, maybe used you know, less intensively used. Mm-hmm. So you're so the the plan is to cover all of the the canals with like are you building like bridges that are across the canals or just like like metal uh, I don't know bridges are the first thing that come to mind but how like what's kind of the engineering of how this is going to be set up? Right now we have uh, a prototype project under 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 design and hope to start building on it this fall in partnership with an irrigation district in the Central Valley of California, Turlock Irrigation District, mm-hmm. which is the oldest irrigation district in the state, a very and, and an electricity provider as well as a water provider, has a, a very uh, I think forward looking outlook on what they need to do to both serve both their customers and and do it in a in a sustainable way. So they offered to cover uh, some of their canals as part of the demonstration and to work the bugs out of the design. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it's it's conceptual. Now there have been some of these canals covered in. Uh, in India successfully, but it's a little different technology and it doesn't work so much because we have different ways in the U.S. of building the canals, of doing maintenance on them, and we need some equipment access, I think, whereas some of the work in India maybe is done more by hand. Mm -hmm. And so our our design has to be a little different for that that purpose. Uh, So think of it as Let's say you're building a, a carport or something. You'll build, uh, you know, uh, uh, you put some posts up and then you'll build some roof joists or you know, supports across it and then put the roof on it. Well, it's similar to covering a canal. If, if the canal isn't, isn't too wide, you can put a post on one side and cantilever the panels off over it. Mm-hmm. Okay. But if it gets too wide, then you have to put supports on both sides. Okay. Okay. So that, and now that, go ahead. I'm sorry. Now that that's, that's for canals that don't get too wide and that's, those are steel. But then when they get much wider, we, um, we use a cable suspension, think like a cable bridge or something. So it's a, it's a lighter weight, lighter weight thing, but then you have to anchor them back a little ways from the canal to hold them in place. Okay. So so it's different designs depending on how wide your canal is. <laughs> okay. All right. And so this is this is obviously to, to to harness the power of the sun, but isn't it also a dual purpose initiative? Isn't it also to stop evaporation or did was I am I making that up in my mind? 
it should reduce evaporation. Yeah, and, and no, you didn't make that up. That's, that's exactly, that's why, uh, you know, after we published that paper, we were getting calls from and emails from zillions of people saying, hey, you know, that's an idea I had years ago to save water and produce more water and so forth. And we said, yeah, you know, we all, great minds think alike <laughs> on these things. So, I have kind of a goofy question. Now, I'm assuming, and, and now the more I think it out, the more goofy it, I, I, I think it is, but I would assume that there's going to be, especially in the summer, there's going to be potentially some heat rising. Is there a way to capture that energy that you guys have thought about? Well, by... by uh not not necessarily by putting the but by putting the canals over the water that has a little bit of a cooling yeah, effect yeah yeah i just i figured and and, and, it, and they're a little more the panels are can be a little more efficient mm -hmm. they get less efficient when they get hot oh hotter. okay so all right so you're, you're going to use and that's kind of i was like i don't know I, I, for some reason i'm thinking that the solar panels are going to be like see-through or translucent is maybe a better word. And it was going to kind of heat up the water a little bit and there'd be some more. And I was like, maybe we could, but I, I, now that I think about it, the more I thought about it, I, was, I think I feel like solar panels are pretty much black um, for the most part. Yeah. And that, that's yeah, what you are using. Yeah. They'll be at an angle though. So there will be some sun, but you know, the water evaporation is caused by both, the solar radiation from the sun, but also by the wind, mm. because you're you're as water evaporates, you're, the wind blows that evaporated water out, so the water becomes the air becomes dry, yep, and then more evaporates. So you need to have drier air above the water to evaporate, and the wind replenishes by blowing that humid air out and bringing dry air in. So it's both the wind and the sun yep. that provides the advantage <laughs> the old chinook winds of eastern and, and uh central oregon i was like i, I asked i was like in third grade i should have known that why if it snows so much over the towards the east why is there why is it a rainforest like it's because of the wind it, it sucks up all this it's called a chinook wind i was like oh shit i should have known that good good call roger <laughs> <laughs> take you back to your youth. yeah yeah dude <laughs> I've forgotten so much of what I learned in school. It's not even funny. Um, no, that that is. So, when is this project? Uh, and you may have said that, but I got excited. But um, when is it going to be implemented again? Is it in twenty twenty two, or is this going to be something that is going to be in twenty three? Well, we the uh, design is in in progress right now. Okay. So. Yeah, and and but they need to get more detailed drawings put together, and then they can put it out to bid for a contractor to build it. Mm -hmm. So if that goes smoothly, they should start construction in just a few months. Oh wow! Now, now there may be supply chain issues, so it may not be ready by December, but hopefully early in twenty three, if at the at the latest, yeah. That's awesome. Got, got to make sure there's a contractor available that can do it for the for the amount of money we have available and so forth. Yeah, absolutely. And so you're going to be able to kind of study this and test how much power is this going to be able to produce? Like, is this going to be enough to power uh, a small town? Or I'm kind of curious to, like, once this test project goes live, how much power are you guys hypothesizing you're going to generate? Think of it more as, as a neighborhood or a, 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 you know, a small a commercial area. It's going to be about, I think, maybe five to seven megawatts of installed capacity. Mm -hmm. and, and so I haven't done the calculation as to how much it's going to produce. But we're, we're also looking to couple storage with it so that the uh, electricity can be put into the distribution lines when it's needed rather than when it's when it's produced yeah I, because again it, yeah i worked you want to make it useful yes i almost worked for a company there was a startup they built think of like a 
shipping containers, like a 20 foot shipping container, and they were giant batteries. And they, what they would do is they would get charged up during the day through solar or wind, and then they would diffuse into the grid at night as needed. And then the, the process would repeat, so on and so forth. Uh, I don't know why I didn't take that job now, but um, uh, that, that, okay. that's probably, I'm assuming that would, you would be connected to something like that. I don't even remember the name of that company. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the project developer is a, a company called, startup company called Solar Aquagrid. There are, there are partners. So there, uh, they have a, a solar engineer who's working with the designer and they're looking at some, um, right now, conventional uh, flow battery, I think, uh, storage. But the nice thing is that Turlock Irrigation District has its electricity distribution lines at, right along the canal. So they can put the electricity into the canal wherever they want. Oh, nice. Yeah. That is, that's, pretty, that's, pretty, that's pretty sweet, actually. Why, do you know why they decided yeah. to go that way? Well, that's just the way they developed because they – they developed as an irrigation district, but they serve both water and electricity to the agricultural area, and then they just expanded to serve electricity to the communities too. Oh, that's pretty cool. So in your yeah. opinion, what are some of the hidden costs of this? Not, And I'm not talking financial. Like everything has a cost. So what are you guys afraid of? Like, let's say this initiative takes off. Or are you worried that this might that this might inhibit water, migrating waterfowl that might be landing using these uh, these uh, irrigation uh, canals as breeding or food stops? Like, what what are what do you think is going to be a cost um, to wide implementation of this that we might not that your hypothesize or thinking of? Yeah, our, our hypothesis is that it will not be an issue for for birds. And we have a research partner who works for the Audubon Society who's agreed to, to be a partner in this and evaluate it. And that's his hypothesis, too. So it's not just me. It's it's, it's somebody who knows what he's doing mm -hmm. with, uh, with birds. One of the concerns that we have for scaling is that can we come up with a standard design so that the engineering costs are manageable. Because if you have to re-engineer every canal and every section, that, that's going to be an extra cost there. So right now, if, if you have an open field and you want to build a solar, you take an off-the-shelf design mm -hmm. and you buy an off-the-shelf system to put on there. There's, there's project developers that have those available to, to roll out quickly. So we we need to we need to you know just get at the get at what's what's the best design? Can we get by with three or four designs? Because some of these canals run north south, some run east west, some are fifteen feet wide, some are one hundred twenty feet wide. <laughs> how many different designs do we need to do? And then you know how many of the canals can we cover? Uh, what will be the acceptance by other irrigation districts and by other other agencies? Will they view it as something that's beneficial or something that's an extra cost that's not really part of what they traditionally like to do? Yeah. yeah. Um, so i i see I see more on co benefits than on. Costs and one thing that we have to do is is evaluate and mo see how we can monetize some of the co benefits. Meaning, if you're shading the canal, you're not going to have the aquatic weed growth and algae growth in there. Meaning, you don't have to go in and clean it out <laughs> as often. Well, can we get by with having to go once a year or no times a year? Or what, you know, what's what's that going to result in? Uh, so is there going to be some savings to the canal operator, uh, labor cost savings that, uh, and equipment cost savings? They don't have to do the, the, the clean outs there. Yeah, that's. And, yeah. And then, uh, you know, we, we want to try to do this to excite the public about, you know, solar energy. 
and and building solar energy over their over existing infrastructure rather than taking uh, you know, unused or rather than taking land that could be used either for crop land or its biodiversity value and so forth. I definitely, yeah, because that was my next question is like, how are you going to get other, and the Turlock signed up for it, but how are you going to get other municipalities to join on? And I, I like the co-benefit thing, like, but you know, what is their incentive and your incentive, their incentive could be cost savings, but I'm assuming, I feel like that is going to be a, an uphill battle. Turlock is a very interesting place, a good place to start, especially that they have, you know, access to the, the, the grid is based off of these canals and there'll be, it'll be a super solution. You just, you just hook it, hook it up and diffuse into the grid. But a lot of, I'm assuming that th- that is a pretty unique scenario and that most, most of these uh, aqua, most of the, the canal uh, counties aren't like that, I would assume. Well, yeah, we actually don't know how many, but it's, I, I think there's enough to keep us busy for a while yeah. where, where there's a, a good synergy, synergy there. You know, one of Turlock's key motivations, again, was not having to buy land because they wanted to put in solar. They do want to put in more solar, but they don't own any more land. So they said, "Hey, let's just use the land we have." Yeah, it, and uh, it, I'm 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 excited for this to go down. I want to see how it works. I can't wait to see the papers that that come from this because this this could be a very viable solution to a, a large problem. Um, um, go ahead. Yeah, we we we'd love to get uh, an installation. You know, the some of the canals cross the. The interstate freeway, Highway 5 and Highway 99, the big north-south highways mm-hmm. that run from, you know, Highway 5 runs the length of California. If we could have those by as, as rest stops where people would stop and charge their electric vehicles and so forth, and if it could fit into, you know, into, into the whole electric vehicle system, because there are many places where canals are near highways and freeways and so forth. Oh, yeah. So there's just so many possibilities there. And, and I think that's what could help capture the imagination of the public. Because, you know, California is committed to converting its transportation from fossil fuels to, to electricity. And, and we're looking at, uh, yeah, I'm, 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 also, I'm also encouraged because there's now uh, – a proposition that I guess will be delayed till till next year, Prop Prop Thirty, to put real money into these electrification efforts, into building the infrastructure for electric vehicles, into subsidies for electric vehicles, and also to help reduce forest fire emissions. Yeah, 